Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. To you, Lord, I'm grateful, Allah the Sustainer. For since I'm remorseful, Allah the Forgiver. For blessings, I'm hopeful, Allah the Bestower. Gracious and merciful, Allah the Creator. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم We are still discussing about معاد and the ninth proof is that the spirit is an abstract and not in a material form. Well, uh, the human being is made of two parts. One part is the material body in which the Holy Quran said it was created from clay, mentin. And there is another part and that is his soul or his spirit and it's good to mention that soul and spirit according to some they are the same while according to others they have a different definition however practically we will assume that the soul and the spirit are the same thing you know now when you go into more philosophical details there might might, might be some differences uh, to be discussed however the matter is that uh, is the human being has a spirit or not? Yes, we say he is alive with the soul, with the spirit. Uh, now, is that material or immaterial? That is the thing. We say it is immaterial, which uh, is called abstract as a philosophical term. You know the difference between material and immaterial things? Uh, well, it is said generally there are four differences. Material things are in need of time and in need of space and are divided and will change by time. The immaterial does not need time, does not need space, cannot be divided and will not change by time, will remain as it is. Now the body, when we talk about the body, the body is material, well, because it needs a space. We say this is the size of the body. It is in this time and, well, can be divided and will change by time. Actually, every second our body is changing, you know. And we're young, uh, we're uh, adults and then get elderly in age and every day uh, millions of cells will die, million new cells will come and so on. All these are sign of change. Now, uh, what are the proofs that the spirit or the soul is an abstract? Why this issue is raised? Because the materialist, those who do not believe in non-material things in, in life, they say there is nothing called spirit, no soul. Whatever is there is this physical material body and death means that the biological activities will stop <coughs> and that will, which will make death. Now, biological activities, sometimes they define it, what is death from medical point of view? He said when the heart stops, beating or when the brain stops working so they put let us say electroencephalography and they see that the brain has no activity let us say for three minutes if the brain has no activity they say this is permanent death this is death the doctor put stethoscope on the heart to check if the heart is beating or not 
or they may put ECG and check. There is no activity for the heart and the ECG is flat for five minutes, 10 minutes. They said, well, then death is happening. Or the eye, let us say, will dilate and will not change, you know. The limbs will not move. Uh, breath, which is an activity, biological activity, will stop. There is no breathing. So all these are signs of life. Activity, development, movement, uh, all that is sign of life. If that is stop, we call the person is dead. So they said there is nothing behind these material things, because these material things, well, this is the body, and there is a machine, there is a heart beating, and uh, the brain is working, the eye is seeing, the chest is moving to uh, mid uh, respiration, for example, and so on. Uh, um, muscles are uh, active, so one can walk, his hand will move. Uh, if the heart stops, for five minutes, then there is no blood to the brain, there is no oxygen, the brain will die. And if the brain is dead, then the muscles will be paralyzed all, the activities will stop, and the person will die. So death is this material shape. This is the death, nothing else, you know. Uh, actually, uh, in medicine also, it is very difficult to give a proper definition for death. There are so many definitions, and each one has its own expression, but still there are deficiencies in it. When you say the heart stop for 10 minutes, let us say, well, three minutes, the brain will die, sometimes five minutes, say maximum 10 minutes. Okay, but if the heart is out and you put on... Uh, artificial machine, artificial heart, the body is alive and the heart is stopped. In surgery, you know, you can remove the heart and the body is alive. So again, it is not belong to the heart itself. As a result of stopping of the heart and lacking oxygen to the brain and death of the brain, which will make paralysis of the let us say, muscles and uh, activities, uh, then death will happen. Now, death means a, a result of that, not stopping of the heart. You see, there is two things. Stop, the heart may stop, may not. There will be no death. The result of stopping of the heart will be death. So, but what is death itself? This is the, due to that, death will happen. If the heart is beating, death will not happen. If the heart stops, death will happen. So, the death is the result of a stopping of the heart or of the brain or whatever other vital uh, organs, lack of oxygen, let us say. There is no oxygen, the cells will die. So, the result of no oxygen is death. But now, what is death itself? That result, what is it? So the material people, they said, okay, the death is only this body has no activity. We call them dead. But uh, we said, no, there is another entity inside which make, and that is the real entity of the uh, human being, and that is his spirit, his soul. That if comes out of the body, then death will happen. So death is separation of the soul or coming out of the soul or of the spirit from the body. When it comes out of the body, rest of the body will die. All activities will stop. As long as the soul is there, the person is alive. Even if the heart is not beating, you put him on artificial machine, machine is not heart, he get oxygen, one will remain alive for years, no problem. So nowadays, even if the brain is not working, that is a complete damage of the brain, if you give oxygen quickly to the body, 
the body will remain alive, though he, he cannot um, get uh, thinking uh, or, like to say, seeing and all that. But then the body will remain, the heart will continue beating, the chest you can, with artificial machine, you can make respiration uh, for the chest and you can give him food. The food will make the rest of the cells of the body alive. His kidney will work, his intestine will work. His heart is beating, circulation is there, though there is no brain. The brain, let us say, due to car accident, is damaged completely. But if you can reach the body within three minutes to give oxygen, as sometimes they do it in, uh, in the hospitals or in certain emergencies, uh, as you know, uh, it is written in the newspapers that some people are for years, they are alive and the hospital don't know what the court will say, is this dead? So they can remove all the instruments and let him die completely. There is no oxygen, no food, nothing. Or they have to keep the machines and keep artificial respiration machine and keep food which is given to that. So we'll make him alive. And sometimes the people become alive after um, certain days. I mean, before they used to think for three days if he is not alive, then there is no hope to be alive. He is completely dead. Later on, they put for experiment certain people, though it is very costly, you know, because that is a special machine and a special room and a special care it needs, but for sake of test, you know, they try to keep the body alive even if the brain is lost, for example. They say, okay, we know now. Uh, according to our limited medical knowledge, the brain is dead because more than three minutes there was no oxygen and the brain is dead completely. And no hope. This is irreversible case. He will not go back to life. But let us see what will happen. Let us keep him, the body, alive. They found after 10 days, some people become alive. They said, oh, how it happened? Our standard was three days, now become 10 days. Then they kept certain people after one month after three months, some after two years, they came back to life. The brain started working again. And he get conscious and he's now alive. You know. So now the question from medical point of view, and probably you read in the a newspaper, when you regard the person is dead, so that you are allowed to stop all the cost and to stop the, the special room and special care from him. Is he dead? And you are making him alive only, the body alive by machine? Or his brain might be, if two years happened, then why not 10 years? Why not 20 years? How do you know? You see, uh, 40, 50 years before, they used to say uh, three minutes. After that, if one hour finished. Maximum, they say, okay, for sake of precaution, we keep him for three days. You know. But then they found after three days, after one month, two months, six months, and so on, you know. So what I mean, these are the, the problems of life and death, is from material point of view, it is, or medical point of view. But now we say the death is the separation of the link between the spirit and the body. Because the body is being run, all its activities are run by the spirit. Actually, the spirit will see through the eye. Otherwise, the material eye will not see. But this material eye, when there is life in it, when there is a spirit in it, it will see. So the activity is done by the spirit. The spirit will hear through my ear. The spirit will feel pain if the body gets some pain. And so on. So activities are done by the spirit. Spirit is moving the body and is sh expressing its activities through the body. So the body is a mean for activities of the spirit or of the soul. That is what we understand. Now, what is the proof that there is something called soul or spirit? Who says there is a spirit? Maybe there is no spirit. You claim something. Not a true. I discussed before what does it mean that it is a mean, but probably it's good here to repeat it. You know, when you write by pen or ball pen 
Okay. When you write whatever writing, now who is the writer? The ball pen or you? If you say, I am the writer, okay, leave the ball pen. Can you write? You cannot. If you say the ball pen is writing, leave the ball pen and say, ask the ball pen. Okay, you write. Can the ball pen write? No. So what is the answer? The answer, I am writing. But I cannot express my ability of writing except through using the ball pen. So the, the one who directly writes is the ball pen, true. He makes the letters and black or blue, whatever color, the ball pen will make it, not, not me. But the ball pen, who give power to the ball pen to move? Myself. So I am the writer through the ball pen. Without the ball pen, I cannot express my ability of writing. No ball pen, I say, well, I have no pencil. How can I write a letter to you? You see? So the real writer is me, but the mean I use for writing is the ball pen. The same thing, the real one who is alive is the spirit. But how the spirit show its activities, its ability to see, to hear, to move, to talk, to remember, how, how show it? it show it through the physical body. Through this eye, the spirit can see. Through this leg and muscles, the spirit can walk, can move. So the body is a mean, like the ball penis, is a mean to show activities of the spirit. The real activity is for the spirit. If the spirit comes out of the body, the body is dead, like the ball pen. You leave the ball pen, it's dead. As long as there is link, there is control, the ball pen will move. If you dissociate, the relation, cut the relation with it, well, we'll die, finish. So you see, that is how they give an example how the soul, the spirit, is the one who do all activities of a human being, let us say what you call it, a living, sign of living activities, you know. Perception, feeling, thinking, walking, etc. So now, the question is the spirit itself is material or immaterial? Now, suppose one say it, okay, I agree there is a spirit, but the spirit is the same body. The spirit is the same, the same cells of the brain, cells of the heart, cells of the lung, cells of the stomach, intestine. These are the, these are the what you call soul. This is the soul, not something immaterial. So the answer, we say there are many proofs that the spirit is an abstract. Abstract is one immaterial, simple, immaterial things which will not change and uh, is not uh, in a material form. And that is the, what you call the spirit. The proof, there are, let us say, two ways to discuss about it. One, rational discussion, secondly, what the Holy Quran says about the uh, spirit. When we come to the rational proofs, the first proof is say personality is stable and fixed. What do we mean personality? When you discuss about yourself, what you say? You say, I am. Who are you? I. You, your head? No, you say, this is my head, my hand my chest, my leg, even you say my brain, the brain you related to whom? To my, to yourself. All your body you related to someone else, another entity, say my body. So who are you if the body is you, you yourself? So this shows that there is another entity in which you always relate things to that. So, and that entity looks to be fixed, not changing. Why not changing? Because when you were a child, you say, this is my body. Now your body changed, so small size and now big size. Still you say, my body. So 
that your body was small, how this body is the same that? Say, no, still, my is mine. I am the same. Say, you have not changed. Say, my body changed, yes. My weight changed. I was five kilo, now I 70 kilo, 80 kilo. I was 60 centimeter long, now I am 175 centimeter long, for example. But then I have not changed, I am that. The same baby is me. I am that one. So if it is material, how you say the same one? That one has changed a lot. Actually, the body, physically, the cells had certain age and will die, except the uh, nerve cells, which will not die. I mean, if it die, will not be formed again. Other cells are continuously getting dead and thrown out of the body and new cells come. So probably every 10 years, all the body will change. So already your previous body has changed many times and still you say my body, myself. So that my, who is you? Who is my? Who is I? And you say I, my hand. Then that my, who is he? So you see, it shows that there is another entity within me beside my body. I relate everything to that entity. I say that entity is fixed, will not change, and continuously existing. Though my body changed, sometimes my body is sick, somebody is healthy, sometimes I get burned by sunlight, for example, sometimes I am all right, and sometimes I am a child, sometimes I am young, in all those cases, still I say, my body. So there must be something which make my entity other than this material body. Because all this body, I am relating it still to mine. I mean, if that mine is in the brain, so at least the brain, I cannot say my brain, because the brain, the brain itself is mine. So body of the brain hand of the brain, but it is not like that. Even the brain, which has all the sensory activities and thinking and um, effect of life and all its importance, still you do not call it uh, he is your entity because it's my brain. So my, this brain belong to me. So who am I that this brain belong to me? So naturally there is another entity different from me. That is why I relate everything to that entity. I say, my brain. My house. Well, I was a child and I inherited the house. Now I am adult. So this house was for that child. Why now I am adult the same? I am not the same. I am different. I say, no, I am the same. So how you are the same? When you inherited the house, you were a child. Now you are a big man. No. Say, but, but I have not changed. What has not changed? All your body changed. Even the brain becomes size of the brain bigger. And, well, experience or knowledge or everything has changed, you know, with that. So it shows that there is an entity within us, and that is what we call our soul or our spirit or body. Um, and that is the one in which we call abstract. It is not material. Well, the second proof, you know, which is just an elaboration or addition to this, I say sometimes my feeling about my body is totally gone, but still I feel about myself that I am there. You know, sometimes if I am, let us say, on the seaside and I'm getting complete rest and I'm not thinking about my body, I'm just lying, I may forget my body completely because I'm not thinking of the body, complete rest, you know. But I will not be able to get out of myself, forget myself. Myself, I remain myself. I don't care for my leg, you know, I'm lying. There is no heat, no cold, the weather is nice. 
the temperature is good. My hands are resting. My respiration is quite stable. Everything. So I am not thinking of that at all. But do I forget myself? Well, the self is there. The self is there. Always, you, you know, that yourself, you are there. Like Descartes, the philosopher, the French philosopher, he said, I think then I am existing. Because if I think, if I forget about everything and all what I was told is not there, at least I cannot deny a fact that I am thinking now. If all the facts told to me by my parents, my society, by religion, by the priest, by alim, by religious books, if, I, if all that, I doubt them. Do I doubt that I am thinking? I cannot doubt. Why? Because thinking is my inside. I cannot doubt myself. I may doubt what I see is not water. Maybe it is a phantom, not water. Maybe. I may doubt the colors I see are not the true colors. Maybe I have color blindness. Maybe. But do I doubt about myself that I am there existing? There is no doubt. So that must be something else other than the body. Because I may forget temporarily my body, but I cannot forget myself. Well, the third uh, rational proof uh, is non-division is a sign of an abstract. We say the, the abstract is something which is beyond the material thing and cannot be divided. Now, the body naturally can be divided. If can be divided, then it is not an abstract. It is material. So there is something behind that in which cannot be divided. Can I divide myself into half? I can divide my brain, yes. It's a half a brain, quarter a brain. I can cut my hand into pieces, yes, yeah, possible. I can cut the leg into pieces. The heart can be cut into pieces. The lung. But can you cut yourself into pieces? Make a half here, put half here. Can you make it? You cannot. See, material things, they said philosophically, it is that thing which can be divided. Now, sometime for sake of argument, they said we'll reach to the atom and the atom cannot be divided. Because if you get even parts of the atom, let us say electron alone or proton alone or neutron alone, that is the smallest particle, the smallest part of the material body which cannot be divided. Because if you divide, it will finish, it become energy. There will be no electron. Suppose that is true, because till now we don't know if electron is divided or not, because there are still signs that electron is made of photons or particles or quarks and so on. So these are formed from smaller parts. Now, suppose for sake of argument, that is there, but still in the mind you can divide the material things into half, into un limited divisions, you know. You can imagine division of that because it is anything material you can imagine, it can be divided. But now the soul, which is an abstract, how can you imagine divided? You know, you, how, you think, how to divide the soul? You make half this side, half this side, possible? You put two plates, put half a plate, half soul here, half soul here. Half a spirit here, half a spirit there, possible? Not possible. So you see, it is sign and of an abstract. Now, whether we call it simple as a philosophical term or abstract, is good to mention here. Well, simple and abstract are almost the same, except they say that the abstract has some relation to the material things, but the simple has no relation at all to material things, to body. And because the soul can have relation with the body, and that is how it run affairs of the body and activities of the body, is called abstract and is not called uh, simple. I mean, that is just, let's say, for philosophical uh, details, you know, which, well, 
we are not in that, you know, but just by the way, uh, it's good to mention it. You know. So these are um, all uh, things that uh, you say. Um, sometimes you have a feeling of the soul. Let us say you love your children. Can you divide that love into half? Say today I love you half love and tomorrow another half. Well, if you give him a gift, yes, you can. You give him a piece of cake, you say you can divide half cake. You eat one piece and the rest keep it for tomorrow. If you give him orange, yes, possible, half orange. But can you give him half love? So love is either there or not there. You see, there are certain things which are not material and cannot be divided. Uh, that is a sign that it is an abstract. So the soul and its effect, or the spirit and its effect, are all, and because it is an abstract, and we cannot divide that. We cannot change it. So that is anyhow uh, about uh, this. It is just rational discussion, but certain philosophers, they put more than 40 proofs that the soul is an abstract. And some have gone up to 100 proofs that the soul is an abstract. However, that is not um, our main subject uh, to go through that philosophical discussions, but at least we know now the soul is an abstract, and now we are willing to discuss about Ma'ad, and Ma'ad will start with the uh, death of the person, so now we need to know the relation between body and soul, that is why we discuss this matter. What the Holy Quran says, actually the Holy Quran do not say frankly that the soul is an abstract or material. That one is not clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran. But there are certain ayahs of the Holy Quran you might understand from it that the soul is an abstract. Uh, actually, the Muslim scholars, they were uh, divided in that issue. Uh, some said the soul or the spirit is starting from material, its origin is from the body, but its uh, staying will continue forever, will not die like the body. It starts from the body, so its origin is material origin, but its staying is spiritual or non-material stay, will remain forever. Some say, no, the spirit, it was created at the beginning, and it was there, but then when the body was made for it, it came and joined that body. So it already was existing, and its creation is not from matter. Creation is non-material things. Let us say from Alam al-Malakut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to blow the spirit to a human being. And so on. You know, there are theories what I mean. The ayahs of the Holy Quran, we might understand in a way, some people might argue, we don't take it definitely, but there are signs from the Holy Quran about it. In Ma'ad, all what is necessary to believe that we are going to be resurrected by our body and our soul. It is not the soul alone which will come in the day of judgment and not the body alone will come. Both body and soul will be resurrected in the day of judgment. That is the obligatory part to believe. That the wajib part to believe that we believe our resurrection in the day of judgment is both the body and the soul. Because there are some Muslim scholars that review that the body is not important, the soul will say no. Our body and our soul both will come in the day of judgment and the resurrection is there. What are the details? Now it is not wajib to know all those details. Okay, you can discuss it, you can get acquainted with it, you can understand in whatever way ulama explain the ayah uh, and the, uh, the certain verses of the Holy Quran, that is okay. 
But what I mean, it is not wajib to know all those details, you know. The wajib is only that. Okay, because we need to elaborate the matter more uh, so that we might go into little more details about it. Now, the, in the Holy Quran, um, we see in Surah Al-Zumar, Surah 39, verse 42, Allah yatawaffa فيمسك التي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى أن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون الله takes the souls at the time of their death and those that die not during uh, die not I mean those who are not dying Allah during their sleep means Allah will take their soul during their sleep then he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala withholds those on whom he has passed the decree of death and sends the others back till an appointed term. Most surely there are signs in this for a people who reflect. So here this ayah in short, it says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the souls from the, the soul are separated from the body, will take them now, some of the people, it is decreed that they will die, so Allah will keep the soul, and naturally they will die. But those who, whom time is not there yet, the soul should go back, so Allah will take their soul where? At night, in their sleeping time, in their dreaming sleeping time, so their soul will come out, but return back. You know. uh, so it shows that what is taken is not the body because in the, in the at that night you are sleeping in your bed but the soul is been taken somewhere else so it shows that the soul is not the same of this body it is an abstract coming out of the body here um, i mean in, in this ayah you see the uh, two point when you say allah yatawaffa yatawaffa Tawafi means to take all. Now, English only say take, but when you go to Arabic term, yatawafa means take him all, all him, all of him, not part. When you have debt to somebody, you pay your loan back, you say you paid it all. So he has taken all the money which was given to you, all. This is wafa daynahu, means completed. So now, say so Allah will take the souls at time of death, and those who will not die will take them at sleeping time, will take them all. Now all what? The body is there already, sleeping in the bed. So that all here is the sign for the soul. The soul represents all the body. Because we said the body is a mean. The real personality of the person is his soul, his spirit. That is the real personality. So that, if it is taken, he is taken. All of him is taken. That body has no value. The body like the cloth. The cloth is there, but you can't leave the cloth. It's okay. Still you are there. So that soul, when it's taken at night, and the word, يتوفى, Allah يتوفى الأنفس, and take them all, that shows, well, probably, according to this explanation, that it is, an abstract and that which will represent the human being whole, all of him. Because Allah take him all with tawaffi. And then here uh, the, the terms Allah said will take and will send one and will catch with hold one uh, or, or send back. So all those terms he is talking about what? Naturally not the body because the body already in its place did not move about the soul. So here shows the soul itself is representing that. We come to the second ayah, and that is in Surah Al-Amran, chapter 3, verse 169. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ And recall not those who are killed in Allah's way as dead. Nay, they are alive and are provided 
sustenance from their Lord. Now, those who are killed in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see, don't uh, think they are dead. Don't recall them dead. And they are alive with their Lord. Naturally, when you say they are alive, which one is alive? The body, body is dead. So you say they are alive, who they are. They are their body or they are their soul. Whom the Holy Quran is said they are. So it shows that the real personality is for the soul, not for the body. And that is why the Holy Quran said they means his soul, his spirit is alive. And that is not only alive, it's getting its sustenance. Allah will give him whatever uh, food or enjoyment is there, still is given, and it is with their Lord. Similar to it, uh, and the, the second ayah, the same uh, chapter 3, ayah 69, and ayah 70 continuation, he said, فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ أَلَّا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Rejoicing in what Allah has given them out of His grace and they rejoice for the sake of those who being left behind. So you see, now not only they are not dead, you say they are rejoicing uh, because Allah has given them from their, from his grace and also they are thinking about those who are going to come to tell them that uh, well they have uh, no problem, no fear and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them all what they want that they shall have no fear nor shall they grieve so after that no grief and no so the sign no grief no fear, rejoicing and getting sustenance. All these words are you are using them for somebody alive or dead? Naturally, for someone alive. So who is alive? The person is dead, killed, might be cut into pieces by swords of the enemy or by bullet or, or by dynamite or whatever it is, you know. But you say still he is alive, he's not dead. So the talk about whom? Who is he? Naturally, he is the soul, not the physical body. Well, in, also in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 154, uh, it said, تَقُولُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ And do not speak of those who are slain in Allah's way as dead. Nay, they are alive, but you do not perceive. So you do not perceive because you are weak. You do not have that ability to see them, how they are alive, and they are enjoying their life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is uh, second ayah. Um, we come to the, the third uh, ayah about, uh, well, just give a hint that the soul is an abstract. I say is a hint because it, it, what way you explain it, you know. Uh, about uh, Ali Fir'aun, uh, in uh, Surah Ghafir, chapter 40, verse 45 and 46, they say, وَحَاقَ بِآلِ فِرْعَوْنَ سُوءِ الْعَذَابِ And the most evil punishment overtook Pharaoh's people. They say, أَنَّارِ يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا غُدُوَّ وَعَشِيَّ وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ أَدْخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ The fire, they shall be brought before it, every morning and evening and on the day when the hour shall come to pass make Pharaoh's people enter the severest chastisement now he said this fire for punishment of family of uh, Pharaoh's family uh, he said in the morning and in the evening is that in the day of judgment in the day of judgment there is no morning evening there is only one day so it shows it is first in the grave, as we call Alamul Barzakh, which we are going to discuss it in detail. This is, I, uh, proves that there is Alamul Barzakh. There is a word, a living word in the, in the grave. And here, because they were 
non-believer, they are punished morning and evening. And then the rest of the ayah say, And when the hour come to pass, you know, in the day of judgment, when the hour will come, then they will go to hellfire and get the severest punishment. So it shows that it is uh, something else. You know. uh, and we, well, there are many ayahs. I just go through it. You know, it is in Surah Nuh. Uh, chapter 71 verse 25 because of their wrongs they were drowned then made to enter fire so they did not find any helpers besides Allah so they enter fire still it is not the day of judgment when they are drowned because of their sins Right away they get fire. Where is that fire? It is in the grave. But that fire is for whom? Well, the body, we don't see any fire. So naturally, all of it means his soul or that entity which make him, and we said it is an abstract. Well, in Surah Al-Sajdah, Ayah 11, Chapter 32, 11, مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ تُرْجَعُونَ uh, say the angel of death who is given charge of you shall cause you to die uh, then to your lord you shall be brought back die here use the word in arabic yatawaffa and we said wafa means to take you all so it means death take you all means take your soul all and that is the main entity of you is the soul because this body is still belong to the soul as we uh, discussed before. Uh, well, in Surah Yasin, uh, uh, chapter 36, uh, verse 26, It was said, enter the, the garden. He said, oh, would that my people had known of that an account of which my Lord has forgiven me and made me of the honored ones. When he entered paradise, and that paradise naturally is in the grave, not in the day of judgment. Now he remembers his people. He say, if my people would have known, they um, maybe would have been happy because they know Almighty God forgave me and honored me. So where is that paradise? Is it still in the grave he is talking? There is not in the day of judgment. Well, another ayah which is, uh, let us say, very important and will end the subject with it, uh, and that is in uh, uh, verse 23, uh, ayah 12, in Surah Al-Mu'minun, ayah 12, 13, and 14. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is discussing about the creation of the human being. So, and certainly we created man of an extract of a clay. So the man is made from clay. And then, then we made him a small seed in a firm resting place. Then Allah is talking about embryology of the human being. After digging from the chain from clay or extract of clay, uh, then in a resting place in the womb of the mother. Say, ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُّطْفَةَ عَلَقَ فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَ مُضْغَ فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُضْغَةَ عِظَامَ فَكَسَوْنَا الْعِظَامَ لَحْمَ ثُمَّ أَنْشَانَاهُ خَلْقًا آخَرْ فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ Here the Holy Quran said, Then we made the seed a clot. So it was at the beginning a seed, fertilized ovum, and it became its shape like a clot of blood. Then we made the clot a lump of flesh. The clot grow and will look like a small piece of flesh. Then we made in the lump of flesh bones and then we clothed the bones with the flesh, with meat. So now these are processes of embryology. Starting with the first seed and then it is a clot and then it is a flesh 
and then there are bones, and then the bones are covered with flesh. Okay? But we see the tone of the ayah changed here. You say, then we caused it to grow into another creation. So blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. Now what does it mean we caused it to grow into another creation? ثُمَّ أَنْشَأْنَاهُ خَلْقًا آخر. We made him another creation. What is another creation? At the beginning, it was the same creation. It started from سُلَالَةٍ مِنْطِينَ An extract of a clay, and that extract of clay was a small seed in a firm resting place, and that seed become a clot. The clot become uh, flesh. The uh, flesh had bones. The bones were covered with uh, flesh and so on but then he say anshaanahu khalqan akhar now we grow it into another creation here another creation which is said at the fourth month of uh, intrauterine life you say when the spirit comes and he become alive now the life which was there before they call it is like vegetable life how the vegetables are alive the trees are alive but that is not like human life with movement and activities but then at that moment human life will come and that life is the one who will run all rest affairs of the human being of course a lot of subjects about it are discussed but what we mean the holy quran says that here and it it is said at the fourth month of uh, embryology life, uh, then the soul will join the body. Uh, and that is why some scholars believe the soul is made from the body, but then it will continue in its, in its spiritual life. Made here because at that moment, the fourth month, of his intrauterine life, the soul will come to the body. So it shows the soul is different from this body. And that is what you say the soul is an abstract. This is all what we want to approve and discuss about. The soul is not the body itself, but is different from the body. And when the Holy Quran says we take the soul out, it means all the human being is represented by that soul his self his soul his spirit that what make him as a human being the rest may be added may change there is no problem for change or um, color changing or the size changing or the weight changing and that will not make his entity the entity of a human being is with his soul with his spirit and that is an abstract and that abstract will not die it may get dissociated from the body. That relation will go out. Like you have a relation with the ball pen, it will write as long as you are in touch with him. If you leave it, it will die, but still you are alive. So the soul will remain alive. Well, uh, it is sufficient up to here. Then, inshallah, in next session, we'll discuss more about the death and meaning of death and uh, hadith what they say about the death and about the soul and uh, much more details will come inshallah we will uh, discuss it in the next session walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadi wa alihi al-tahirin allahumma salli ala muhammadi wa ali muhammad wa ajjal farajahum